Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video we will take a look at this 2007 MacBook 2.1 which I got for 15 bucks at a local auction. I bought it as potentially working but without any accessories, a dead battery and in below average cosmetic shape. While I begin to clean the notebook in the background, let's first talk about the specs. Like I said in the intro, this is a 13 inch MacBook 2.1 from 2007. It features an Intel Core 2 Duo T7400 CPU clocked at 2.16 GHz. It is accompanied by 1 GB of RAM. The GPU is a Intel GMA950 using 64 MB of RAM as shared video memory. A 120 GB hard drive is used as storage. The MacBook also features an integrated iSight camera. On the side we can see the MagSafe charging port, rest in peace, and RJ45 Ethernet jack, mini DVI for external displays, Firewire 400, two USB 2.0 ports, a 3.5mm microphone jack and 3.5mm headphone jack. On the other side we can see the 8-speed super drive. This MacBook also features a IR port for an Apple remote which is kinda cool. The cleaning went smoothly. I could remove most of the dust and dirt, especially on the underside of the MacBook. As a finishing touch I used a magic eraser to try to buff out some of the scratches. They don't really show up on my camera but there are many deep scratches in the polycarbonate. Sadly, I could not remove much. I also have no way to fix the broken plastic on the palm rests. The discoloration at the top of the edge of the screen was removed successfully using the magic eraser. Now that the notebook is clean, let's try turning it on to see how the hardware looks. Hmm, this is not looking good. But it might just be that this MacBook came without a hard drive, I actually don't know. To access the drive, we have to use a coin or a screwdriver to open the battery latch. After pulling out the battery, we have to remove these three Phillips head screws and pull back on this L-shaped bracket. Okay, so there is actually no drive here. This is good news, because that means a new drive might be all this MacBook needs. While we have the MacBook open, let's talk upgrades. I will use this 480GB SSD to replace our non-existent 120GB HDD. I will also upgrade the RAM from 1GB to its maximum of 3GB. 4GB can also be put in but only 3.5 gigs will be detected. So I thought let's just use 3 gigabytes here. Here we can see the 512 megabyte modules that came from the factory with this MacBook. We will put a 2 gigabyte and a 1 gigabyte module in. Since I don't have a drive caddy, I use tape and a folded piece of paper to get the SSD in the right spot. Looks janky but works fine, especially with an SSD. I mean, I could just buy a caddy, but that would cost about as much as I paid for this MacBook. Finally, we'll put the L-shaped bracket back in place and slot the battery into position. Now that the SSD and RAM are in, let's install macOS. Let's see if the MacBook boots, fingers crossed. I'm holding down the ALT key to get to the boot menu. Success! We can see the thumb drive as a bootable installer. I could install macOS versions starting from macOS 10 Tiger all the way up to Lion. I have a macOS Snow Leopard DVD from my 2009 MacBook. The files from these grey install DVDs can actually be modified and copied to a USB drive to be used on all Macs, which is what I did here. Cue the macOS 10 install montage.
install went quite a lot faster than back in the day using a DVD and mechanical hard drive. Mac OS X Snow Leopard is super nostalgic for me, since this was the OS installed on my first Mac, a 2009 MacBook which I purchased in 2010. Seeing this intro brings back many good memories. Damn, what is it with these mid-2000s Apple devices and their intro videos? Just like the Apple TV one from the last video, this feels so nostalgic and I really love it. Yes, that is exactly how I look like. Perfect. Now let's see if our 3 GB of RAM are actually detected. Looks good. I'm really surprised by the speed of the system. It feels very responsive. I wanted to try out one of DOS Dude One's macOS patchers to see if we can install some modern macOS on here, but sadly the last five versions are not compatible with this MacBook. So I thought about something else to stress test this hardware a bit. May I present you with the first and only game for macOS I bought since 2010. Spore. After that I installed Windows in Bootcamp and just bought the way cheaper Windows versions of games before getting a dedicated Windows PC for games. Nice, our GMA950 is not compatible, so we're off to a good start. We will just ignore this for now. This is going to take a while. The sad part about Spore is that it was not only the first and last macOS game I bought, it was also way overhyped and I bought it with huge expectations only for those to be shattered in the first few hours of playing. I didn't even finish the game. Damn, that took long to install. Don't you love always on DRM? Now after connecting to Wi-Fi, let's try again. Nice, and it crashed! Maybe this update will fix it. Wow, really? Some of the files have been modified? Maybe by the update we just tried to install? What is this? This really is the EA games we all know and love. Since the game wasn't able to start anyway, I think it just might not run on this MacBook. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Still, the MacBook works, is cleaned now, and is super fast and responsive, which is all I wanted. I mean, what else can you say for 15 bucks? So if you liked this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.